Hello and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, welcome back to the car, welcome back to Cornwall and welcome back to another chilly day. It's winter, winter is definitely here as we go through the lovely village of Golville and I am out, I'm out on a bit of a mission because, for you see, there is a bit of a problem with the car. The window that you guys are stuck to has an 18 inch scratch along the middle of it and it's not very deep, it's a hairline scratch. Um, but I was just like, well, that is something that is new and that I don't want on my car. It picks up light from the sun, so on a day like today, when the sun hits it, you can definitely see it. Right now it's kind of hard to see. It's one of those ones that is, it's annoying. It's really, really annoying. Um, I didn't do it. It was, it was an accident, um, but I'm just like, well, I can't live with it. So I went on the internet and I was just like, how do you get rid of scratches from glass? Because people have had cars for many, many years, probably ooh, like a hundred years or so, and this is not a new thing. How do you get rid of it? Well, apparently it's the same way uh, as you would get rid of scratches from watch faces. Um, as an aside, this watch was a present from my family, um, actually quite a few years ago now. It was a birthday present and it's kind of special to me. This is, <laughs> hi, hi, welcome to the vlog, here's an aside. Um, yeah, so this is a watch made by Pointec and it is a, a German watch and it is LZ129. So the little inscription on there is LZ129 Hindenburg because I am not obsessed with airships but I'm fascinated by airships and air travel and sort of flight from the very early days of, well, flight. That wasn't even a well-constructed sentence. What am I doing? No, I really, really am um, fascinated with everything that goes up in the air. And uh, airships uh, are definitely one of those. Uh, the Hindenburg, the Graf Zeppelin. In fact, the Hindenburg, Everyone thinks, ooh, it crashed on its maiden voyage. It, it got to Lake Hurst and it exploded and the Germans didn't know what they were doing. The Hindenburg actually flew for an entire season between Germany and South America. They flew for a, an entire year. It was only uh, when they got to Lake Hurst there was, well, there was a few things that happened. One of which, uh, you're not supposed to steer more than seven degrees left or right. This is going to be tight. And we're going to get a little loud, I think. Yeah, we're not fitting through here, lads. All right. Okay, cool. Squeezed way through. We'll just, we'll pick up momentarily. We just have to get through here. Thanks, dude. Yeah, that's always a bit of a narrow bit. The rest of the road is narrow, but that's a particularly narrow spot. Um, yeah, so the Hindenburg got to Lakehurst. The captains, Pruss and Learman, who weren't the normal, uh, normal captains for the airship, uh, decided to ignore the only turn seven degrees rule and threw her into basically handbrake turn because they, the world's press were watching and they wanted to, they wanted to moor before dark. Uh, a storm was coming in uh, and they would have to spend another day just circling around. So they were like, well, to save face and for our current political party in uh, the, the homeland, let us, uh, let us just try more. Unfortunately, one of the things that the airships have, uh, the German airship design was that you had duralumin spars on the outside of the frame. So you had a rigid frame, which made up a balloon um, with duralumin spars. And then you had cables, much like bicycle spokes on the inside. And the bicycle spokes, uh, what they would do is they would hold the outer edge of the airframe together and then you put big, uh, big silk airbags. I think rubberized silk airbags. I think the R100, uh, no, the R101, the British airship, used part of like cow intestines, like a very small part of the cow intestine or ox intestine um, could be used. And they took some like 50,000 uh, ox carcasses and use that tiny little part to make the gas bags in the British R101. But yeah, the, the Hindenburg, everyone thinks it just exploded, but really it was quite safe and the number of fatalities was quite low. 
Um, most people just hopped off while it was going up in flames. Um, but yeah, I'm fascinated by airships. I really like airships. I really like airship design. Uh, the R101, British airship, crashed in France. It was the government's uh, airship. Um, the private venture that was uh, also happening at the same time, the British R100, was developed by a lad named Barnes Wallace. Of all people, Barnes Wallace. So what came out of that? Well, uh, color-coded wiring came out of the R100 project. Um, a lot of the duralumin from the R101 was taken back to the UK because it was a British airship that crashed in France. Um, it, that was a tragedy. Uh, a lot of the duralumin was melted down and handed over to the Germans who used it to build the Hindenburg. Wow, wow. So yeah, this is, this is a, um, a, an LZ-129 Hindenburg watch uh, because I wanted to know if there was any sort of memorabilia from that time. There really isn't. But this company was making these, these watches in the style of. Um, and one of the things that I'm always worried about is scratching the bezel. So apparently you can use something called Brasso. Now Brasso is a brass polishing compound. And the brass polishing compound, uh, you can use it on a soft cloth and you can use it to get rid of scratches from your watch face. And I've, I've actually given this a go, but not on the watch. Because a few weeks ago the window got scratched and um, I didn't notice until I got home and I was just like what the heck what the heck he doodle doos well I'm not gonna live with that did a search found a found someone who said yes I've used it on glass it does work but it takes a long time and I'm like okay we will do that so I got some brass so wadding you get a little tin a metal tin and you get some pre impregnated wadding on the inside and you tear it off and I, I worked on it for about an hour it's not visible unless the sunlight hits the scratch, but then I kind of ran out of wadding. Uh, and I was like, okay, fine. I will just go and get some more wadding, or more accurately, I'll get, go and get the liquid stuff. I'll go and get some liquid Brasso. So you get a, a bottle, uh, usually a tin with a little plastic screw cap, and it's got this brass polishing compound on the inside. So I looked on the internet to see stocks of my local hardware store, none. Zero, nada, nothing. It is empty. It is like the Mary Celeste. You want Brasso, but it doesn't exist. All right. So I went to my supermarket, the supermarché. Okay, cool, we're in the supermarket now. Oh, well, I found where the Brasso exists and the Silvo, which is a silver polishing compound. Hey, the labels are on the shelves, but there's no material, there's no actual polishing compound. They've just put like bottles of bleach there instead because there's none in the store. And I'm just like, why, why is there no polishing compound in the county? What is going on? Do people not polish brass anymore? I mean, we can use it on glass, we can use it on brass, we can use it on, let's not go there. But anyway, uh, so I was, I'm, I'm just like, why, why all of a sudden is everyone buying this stuff? Or more accurately, why is no one stocking it? And I thought, wait a second, everyone has chimneys. There's, uh, I looked out of the window and I could see people's houses with chimneys and the chimneys are straight up um, cool faces, the cops. Uh, the chimneys, everyone's chimneys have got like smoke coming out of them. Why? Because everyone who can has a wood burner. Everyone who can has a wood burner in the UK and everyone is burning whatever they can find in their wood burner. Wood, coal, I, I don't know. I was gonna say children, but that's more of an Edwardian thing. Actually, I wouldn't put it past some people. No, uh, so yeah, if everyone's got their wood burners out, they're also gonna be needing to polish the crap out of any brass fittings and fixtures because anytime you burn something in, in your home, um, typically things like brass and silver will become tarnished. And I'm gonna slow right down. There we go. Uh, ooh, this is tight. This is very tight. Let's just get through here. Thanks, dudes. Um, yeah, so it wasn't effective the olden days. You would go and get a, you would go get some bags of coal, or you'd have a coal cellar. You'd have an open fire in the living room, 
and then there was uh, oh god what was it sulfur sulfur something or other would hello uh, sulfur I want to say hydroxide no that's not right there's a compound that comes off burning uh, material and one of uh, Oh god, I'm just trying to navigate this really complicated... It's actually a crossroads. There is another road that goes in the opposite direction as well. Plus there's a little triangular island there. It makes it quite difficult to... Um, difficult to navigate. Sulfur dioxide. I'm pretty sure it's sulfur dioxide that comes out of fires. And that would tarnish things like your silverware. It would tarnish uh, brass. It would tarnish any metals in the room uh, that you had with your open fire. So you would find on a Sunday, uh, your mum or your aunt or whoever, whoever was there would straight up be uh, out with the cloth and the brasso or the silvo and they would just be polishing all of the cutlery um, because it would just become tarnished. Polishing removes a very thin layer of material and one of the issues with that is uh, you would find after many years of this uh, tarnishing and polishing that your cutlery started getting a little bit wavy or a little bit thin. Um, so yeah, it's a, a fun thing from the olden days, but I guess now that everyone has open fires or at least uh, wood burners in their homes and they're using them because the temperature, a uh, Friday the temperature was at negative four here. Negative four here means the rest of the country, because here is subtropical, in Cornwall is subtropical. It means the rest of the country, oh boy, that's gonna be hot. That's gonna be a spicy noodle. Um, hot, I mean cold, the opposite of hot. My brain does that, it just flips things round. So left and right get flipped round, numbers get flipped round. It's, it's a problem. I just live with it, other people have to deal with it. Um, so yeah, there's a spicy noodle. It's very, very cold in the rest of the country. And it's been very cold uh, for the past few weeks and it will continue to be cold into Christmas because while it gets warm tomorrow, we're gonna blast of hot air from the Atlantic. Um, by Christmas, it's all gonna be, all gonna be frosty again. So that's a, that's a fun thing. And you might say, but you are up, you are up um, the same level as, as Newfoundland. Yes, we are. Why isn't it cold all the time? Well, there are two things that keep this country warm. Because we're an island and we're in the, in the Atlantic, the Atlantic conveyor, which is a body of warm water that comes up from the Caribbean, is called the Atlantic conveyor. And it conveys this warm water and it, it hits the tip of the UK, which happens to be where I am in Cornwall. And it, it surrounds the country with warm water. So that's the Atlantic conveyor. And then we also have the jet stream, which comes above the Atlantic and uh, brings warm air, which also warms the country. So we get the Atlantic conveyor and we get the jet stream. Most people know the jet stream, but you tell them about the Atlantic conveyor and they're just like, I don't know what that is. Well, it's what keeps us warm normally. Um, but we've had a blast of air from the Arctic and it has got chilly, chilly, chilly. So hopefully, I can go and find some brass polishing compound, which I can use on the glass to polish the glass back. I reckon it's gonna take at least three hours. It's not a very deep scratch, but it is quite long and quite annoying. Um, and there are things that, well, there are situations where you are the only one that can solve the problem, so why not have a go? And I've, I've used the, the polishing uh, wadding on that window for about an hour. Uh, it doesn't scratch the glass, don't worry about that. Uh, it doesn't make it foggy or misty, it just keeps it transparent, but it should wear down the edges of the scratch and eventually just bring it, uh, bring the glass to the level of the, uh, of the scratch itself. So yeah, we're gonna wear down some of the glass, but it's not, it's probably a tenth of a mil, something like that. Wow, well, we're back here again. Yeah, but also this is where the DIY store is. If you need to go anywhere in Cornwall, you need to drive there, which is a thing. You always have to drive to places in Cornwall. Uh, can you take the bus? No, the buses stop after six anyway. So the bus routes near me all stop after six o'clock in the evening, um, which is kind of useless if you want to go anywhere. 
but also, quite funnily, uh, sometimes they just don't turn up. Or sometimes the summer routes are just completely cancelled. So you might find a bus stop, but no bus is servicing it. Um, so yeah, bus, bus, uh, bus use in Cornwall is absolutely useless. And when I say absolutely useless, what I mean is less than useless. A chocolate teapot is useful because if you pour hot water into it, you get hot chocolate. The Cornish buses, no. And they're super expensive as well, like incredibly expensive. If I wanted to spend five pounds a day traveling anywhere uh, versus the car, which is a hybrid, um, I would soon be poor. Uh, I would be poorer than I normally am. So that's fun. Uh, good. I think we can just jet and we can. There we go. Good, back in pool. So where where is the where is the hardware store? It's B and Q, and it's it's not that far up here actually. Uh, so B and Q stands for Block and Quail. If you didn't already know that, uh, it's in the United Kingdom, and they have a load of hardware stuff. Not as much as I suspect American hardware stores have, because whenever you watch like an American YouTube channel, and they go, Oh yeah, I'm going to do this DIY what they tend to do is just whip out all of these tools and all of these bits and pieces and it's like where did you get all this stuff from well usually it's just stuff they have in the garage um oh yeah because the traffic lights ahead we could have gone through the car park through the back way oh do i feel stupid no as long as uh, as long as the seat leon um, moves a little bit for oh, i see i think it's seat spanish so let's move in here, hooray! You thought the roads were narrow. Wait till you get a look at our car parks. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a little bit weird, this car park. You just gotta keep your head on the swivel. I wanted one of those. Oh, uh, so instead of this car, I would have got a, uh, a Mini Cooper Coupe. They stopped making them in 2013. Um, there were a couple of reasons why I didn't go for it. First of all, they stopped making them in 2013, and the one that I wanted to buy, the Mini Dealer, didn't, uh, didn't actually take me seriously. I was like, I have the money, I'll just buy a car. And they went, okay, well we've got one, but it's in a different showroom, and then they never got back to me. Um, and then the other reason was 25 miles per gallon. This will do 78 miles per gallon on a good day. And in fact, currently we're doing uh, maximum miles per gallon because we're electric. So yeah, yeah, almost had a mini Cooper Coupe. Well, interesting little fact. It feels very similar to this in terms of driving position and steering wheel and everything. But you know what? We're here, another car park in Cornwall. Great. I'm going to leave it there. So if you like these little vlogs, definitely leave a little like, leave a subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, you can be subscribed, but you don't need to, um, don't need to get notifications if you don't want. If you want notifications, click the little, click the little bell, and I'll tell you what, I'll catch you next time.